There's a brand new study out in Nature, which is a peer-reviewed medical journal, demonstrating how masking breeds dangerous bacteria and fungi, and no one is covering this bombshell information. Of the bacteria and fungi in question from this Japanese study, many types were considered pathogenic, meaning um, disease-causing. So that said, the name of this study is, quote, bacterial and fungal isolation from face masks under the COVID-19 pandemic. So to cut right to the chase, if you want a quick synopsis or a summary, here it is, of the different kinds of masks utilized during the pandemic, like non-woven, polyurethane, and gauze masks, this study revealed that 99% of bacterial colonies were seen on the face side of used masks, while 94% of those same colonies of bacteria were also seen on the outside of those masks. Next, this Japanese study also revealed that 79% of fungal colonies were seen on the face side of used masks, while 95% were also identified on the outside of masks. Of all the colonies identified, several were pathogenic or disease causing. And we're constantly breathing this stuff in. Considering face masks don't do a great job at stopping viruses from entering the respiratory tract because a virus is thousands of times smaller than the smallest holes in a mask, this study should be enough to end mandatory mask mandates, especially for those poor kids in school. Anyways, that's just a summary, but the details matter, so stick around. Before we begin, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell in the bottom right hand corner so you can be notified when my new videos come out. Also, click my social links in the description if you want more content like this. I post extra exclusive content on Substack and Patreon if you want, if you're interested. Also, I now have YouTube memberships if you're interested that give you access to more content. So just click the join button above if you'd like. Anyways, let's get into this. First things first, I'm going to pull up my Substack post on this study. So hold on one second. Okay, so I'm going to highlight this area right here. Hold on. So this study was done in early 2020 at the beginning of the pandemic where researchers took used masks from 109 participants. So non-woven polyurethane and gauze style masks whose pores ranged in sizes from 5 to 110 microns. So hold on, just to put that in perspective, the SARS-CoV-2 virus is 0.125 microns, and even most N95s only filter down to about 0.3 microns. So there's not much protection at a baseline there. Anyways, I digress. After that, bacteria and fungi were cultured from the in and outside of those facial coverings in the lab. Now, it is important to note 75% of non-woven masks in this study, which were the majority of what was used by the general public at the time this study was conducted in 2020, were only worn for one day. Well, 58% of other mask types in this study, mainly polyurethane, were worn for two or more days. Now, keep in mind, this is relevant, meaning this is what most people have always done, even now, and that is re-wearing masks because they're expensive for many people. Now, I'd like to draw your attention to this third paragraph here, so let me highlight this. So microbes were introduced to agar plates. Agar is a, a medium or a food microbes need in order to be grown in the lab, in this case for 18 hours. So after incubation, those cultures were analyzed, and here are the shocking results. Bacterial colonies were 13 point four times higher on the face side of masks that were worn for one day and for only three to six hours in that day. Then 79% of fungal colonies in those same masks were seen on the face side of masks while 95% of those same fungal colonies were seen on the outside of those masks. Okay, so hear me out. Bacterial and fungal colonies are not the problem in general. Our body is filled with many different bacteria and fungal colonies. There's a symbiotic relationship we historically have with them. We call this our microbiome and internal flora. Many bacteria and fungi in our bodies are actually capable of fighting cancers, like certain forms of E. coli, which you've heard of. It's incapable of engulfing and clearing certain solid tumor cells, like CT26 cells. On the other hand, well-balanced fungus in the GI tract, like candida, promotes better absorption of nutrients from food and promotes better digestion. So these bacteria and fungi are not the problem. The problem is pathogenic or disease-caused 
causing microbes. And there are many of those found on the outside of these masks in this study. To name some that were found, we have Bacillus cereus, Staphylococcus saprophyticus, Aspergillus, and Microsporum. Those are almost always harmful to the body. They can be helpful, don't get me wrong, but the overwhelming majority of scientific literature shows that those microbes cause more harm than good in humans. Hence the name pathogenic, right? So just to drive this point home, Bacillus cerus, one of the bacterium found on the outside of the masks in the study, is most popularly known as, as a foodborne pathogen, which can cause serious vomiting and diarrhea, essentially food poisoning. I mean, if this stuff was found in a food bar, which is where it's historically been located, many people would likely become very ill. Again, this was found on the outside of masks in this study, along with many other types of microbes that are very harmful to human health. Now, I'm going to pull up the study real quick, so hold on one sec. I'm going to scroll down now to page three, and when we get here, you can look here, where it says results. Now, each bold headline right here, here, and right over here indicates variables that scientists in the study took into account that could have confounded this data. Look here where it says mask types, gender differences, and duration of mask usage. There were no significant differences in outcomes if you were a male versus female wearing a mask in the study. However, females that wore makeup had lesser bacterial and fungal buildup on their masks, likely because instead of the microbes embedding themselves in the mask, even worse, they embedded themselves in the makeup, which is one less degree of separation, so that's not good. Now, as a matter of fact, from this, it says 78% that wore non-woven masks only wore them for a day, and those microbes were still rampant in the masks, even though they were just worn for a single day. Finally, if you look at the third headline right here that says gargling, transportation, and natto consumption, FYI, natto is a fermented food popularly consumed in Japan. None of these things, not even the gargling and mouthwashes, had a meaningful impact on the volume of pathogenic fungi and bacteria found on masks. So what does this all mean? Guys, the takeaway here is that masking breeds harmful bacteria and fungi. Then the question is, why are we continuing to mask? Especially when the only appropriate cluster randomized masking trial in existence out of Bangladesh showed that most masks, including the ones in this study, didn't meaningfully reduce the spread of COVID-19 anyways. So basically, you're engaging in an intervention that mainly confers risk and seemingly less benefit. And again, that's likely because the smallest holes in these masks are substantially larger than the microbes they're trying to keep out. So really now we need a randomized control trial to compare illness in those who mask versus don't mask, although that's unethical and would unlikely be approved. But I mean, it could be done, but in a different way, I suppose. Anyways, those are the facts. If there's anything you'd like to learn about in the future, leave it in the comment section below, and I'll see you on the next one.